spring is just a great time of year where you can get outside and do some planting and definitely get some early vegetables in there. One of our favorite vegetables to plant and would have to be potatoes and great to plant early in the spring but also very enjoyable to eat during the summertime. Love getting those fresh potatoes out of the garden in the summertime. We've got about eight different varieties of potatoes here at Anderson's. Some produce earlier than others, some are quite a bit later, but the best time to plant is usually from the first part of April through the latter part of May, possibly even into the first part of June. In fact, last year we planted our potatoes the first week of June and, and they did just great. This is a, a red Pontiac potato. Uh, red's probably our most popular potato. Pontiac is a large potato, stores really well, but we have an early red that's called Norland. <clears throat> now the Norland, if you plant it the first part of April, it's going to be ready to, to eat about the first part of July when your peas are coming on. So if you like those, those fresh peas and new potatoes, you want to plant Norland because it comes on 30 days earlier than the Pontiacs. Pontiacs aren't going to be ready until August when your Norland's going to be ready in July. And they've got a nice white flesh on the inside, really sweet potatoes. I'm going to cut this one up really quick so you can see what it looks like on the inside. And uh, you know, your red potatoes have that nice white flesh, really crisp, and a really smooth, waxy texture to them. So we love our, our red potatoes and uh, very delicious to eat during the summertime. You can grow russets here too. This is a Norcota russet instead of a Burbank russet. The Norcota russets are... Uh, a little bit more adapted to our soils here in Cache Valley, so the Norcota is a great choice, but uh, russets perform very, very well, and so we sell a lot of russet potatoes as well, too. And this is a Yukon Gold. The Yukon Gold has more of a, a, a a golden yellow exterior, but when you cut it open, it's uh, pretty much yellow on the inside as well too. It's got almost a already been buttered flavor to it when, when you, you harvest them and cook them and, and start eating the potatoes. So best way to plant your potatoes is we do holes about six inches deep, do them about 12 to 16, 16 inches apart, and you wanna cut your potatoes up. So these are the actual potatoes that we're gonna be planting. You wanna cut your potatoes so that there's an eye or two on each piece. So if you can see, if you look real closely right here, there's little eyes that are starting to sprout on that potato all over. And we like those little sprouts coming up because it makes it easier to figure out where to cut the potatoes. You want at least an eye or two on each piece, and the pieces should be, you know, 50 cent size, maybe even a little bit bigger. And uh, you know, I'll show you what to do. So I'm gonna cut this Yukon Gold so you can see what it looks like on the inside, but you got a whole bunch of eyes right there. We've got eyes down here on this end and on the side as well too. So I'm gonna cut this potato probably into thirds. So we'll cut it like right here. Now you can see how yellow it is on the inside. See how br bright yellow that is. But that's one piece that I would plant. And I can cut that into a couple more pieces and, and get more pieces out of a potato. So generally a pound of potatoes will yield enough pieces to plant 10 to 12 hills, 12 to 16 inches apart. So I'm gonna dig my hole, you know, six inches deep, do them 12 to 16 inches apart. In the bottom of the hole, it's a great idea to put a little bit of fertilizer. So we can use a slow release natural fertilizer like the bone meal. Bone meal breaks down very gradually over about a year to two years. So it will feed the potato a high phosphorus fertilizer, which encourages a lot of potato and root production. So the, bo the bone meal is great to throw in there. Tablespoon in the bottom of the hole, work it into the soil. You know, so kind of work that, that fertilizer into the soil, put your potato in right on top of it. And uh, if you want to go with the all natural fertilizer, the bone meal would be perfect. The tomato and vegetable food from Fertilum would be excellent also. You don't have to use as much. It's a little higher in phosphorus. So we'd only use maybe half a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon at the most in the bottom of the hole, work that into the soil as well too. Another thing you can do that will really help out is use a natural mycorrhiza. There's a lot of diseases that affect the potatoes. So there's, there's verticillium and fusarium, but there's, there's some scab and a lot of different diseases that can really bother your potatoes so they don't produce as well. Uh, mycorrhiza, like the mycos in these small little packets, or the myke in this bigger packet, these are specific for vegetables. And they work great with potatoes, they work great with tomatoes and peppers, but we're talking about, about potatoes right now. A little bit of the mycos in the bottom of the hole will colonize the root system of your potato with a microscopic root hair that will go out in search of water and nutrient and bring it right to the plants. It also filters out a lot of diseases so it can fight off the diseases better than your potato would by itself. So the mycorrhiza is very beneficial to put down the bottom of the hole, make your potatoes grow better, grow bigger, produce more potatoes. So it's really gonna help a bunch. Get that down the bottom of the hole with your slow release phosphorus and that's gonna make your crop go like crazy. If you've had problems with scab before in the past, and scab kind of looks 
looks like corky lesions on the exterior of the potato. You can peel them, but you have to peel them fairly deep to get it to come off, but it doesn't really bother the quality of the potato on the inside, just the exterior makes it look really corky and scabby looking. To prevent that, work sulfur into your soil in the area where you're gonna plant your potatoes before you plant. So a product like this, a little bit of soil sulfur, this is 90% sulfur, broadcast that at about two to four pounds per 100 square feet over the area where you're gonna do your potatoes. Till that in, start digging your holes, put the bone meal in, put the mycorrhizae in your potatoes, cover it up and water them really well. They don't like to get too wet, but we want them to, to have the right amount of moisture, but, but not get too dry as well. But too wet's kind of a problem, especially in the springtime. So good watering and your potatoes usually take about three to four weeks to come up. Once they start coming up, you can furrow and irrigate or sprinkler or whatever you need to, but try and keep that soil slightly moist uh, if Mother Nature isn't giving us enough and those potatoes will be up in about three to four weeks and you should have the best potatoes you've ever had.